G'day, welcome to Down in the Woodworks. Today we're going to start making a coffee table out of some beautiful reclaimed Australian hardwood. While trying to do a clean up of my stockpile of reclaimed timber, I pulled out these lengths of hardwood which I thought would make a great coffee table, even if I don't actually need one. I'm not sure on the species, but I think it's either black butt, iron bark, or Victorian ash. Maybe someone can help me out with that. It used to be framing from a house built around the 40s or 50s. First job to do was to cut the timbers roughly to length with the miter saw. Then on each of the pieces I first flattened one face on the jointer. And then using that face against the fence, I flattened one edge 90 degrees to that face. With the flattened side face down, all the lengths will then run through the thickness planer and plane down to the same thickness. The last milling process for these timbers was to rip them to final width on the table saw. And this is how they look, straight out of the planer, without any sanding yet. The tabletop is made up of seven of these boards wide. So to help with edge gluing all of them together, I'm going to use my homemade floating tenon system. I first used this when I built the router table and it worked out really well. So I wanted to use that again. The use of the floating tenons is purely just to help with uh, alignment to try and get all these boards um, dead flat across the top. So the way I've set up the boards to drill those mortises is these two edges are mating edges and I've got the top of the table or the top of the board on the outside. So that's a top surface and that's a top surface. So when I put the router, down onto that edge by using this one side as my reference only I can drill that mortise on this on the outside board and then by turn, picking this up and just turning it around and drilling that second board that way I'm ensuring that the mortise is always the exact same distance from the top surface of the tabletop the bit I'm using here is a 12.7 millimeter or half inch upcut spiral bit. You'll notice I have two marks on the mortise jig, which are the outside edges of the bit. And these just help me to line up the jig with the lines on the workpiece. All that mortising sure made a lot of sawdust. I decided to do the glue up in stages simply because I didn't have enough clamps and the clamps that I did have weren't the best to try and glue all seven lengths in one go. And right here is where I realised I had the middle piece around the wrong way and put the glue on the wrong edge first. So I had to quickly get some glue on the third piece so I could put the pieces together in the right order. No big deal really, just thought I'd share that with you. Gluing the top in sections definitely made the job easier and the extra time was only minimal.
I had a failure with my homemade double bar clamps, so I couldn't use them. But look out for an upcoming video about how I upgrade them to fix the problem. These quick and simple wedge clamps are great when you're stuck for clamps and work surprisingly well, as you can see from that even glue squeeze out. Once the glue was dry, I removed most of the squeeze out with the chisel and then using that same chisel like a scraper, I cleaned up all the glue lines. This actually works really well, but it's very tiring on your hands and I wouldn't use any of your good chisels to do it. And this was a finished product so far, still without any sanding. With the tabletop one piece now, I cut it to length, ready for the breadboard ends to be fitted. I started with the mortises in the end pieces. I marked the centre of the piece by using my marking gauge from both sides to ensure my line was in the centre. Then I measured in 40mm from both ends and drilled a 15mm hole using a Forstner bit. This was to give me a start and finish hole for cutting the mortises on the router table. Then over on the router table I set the fence so that the bit was slightly off centre. The reasons for that were that the bit was only 12mm or so but I wanted the mortise to be about 15mm wide. So this required two passes over the bit, flipping the piece around for the second pass, which also ensured the mortise was exactly centred. I repeated this process three times, setting the bit deeper each time to get the depth of the mortise that I wanted. Next I was on to the tenons, and to start I made a shallow cut using the table saw on both surfaces at both ends. This was to eliminate any potential tear out if I had have started shaping the tenons with the router alone. I then raised the blade to start the shoulder cuts at the end of each tenon. I clamped two temporary fences to the top and bottom of the workpiece to act as a guide for the router and to ensure that the top remained flat while cutting the tenons. Then it was just a process of making numerous shallow cuts equally on both surfaces to creep up on the final thickness and to ensure that the tenon was in the exact centre of the board. Once I was very close to final thickness, I cleaned up the tenons with a rasp file and a sanding block. To soften the look of the top and give it a sort of a lighter or floating look, I wanted to cut a 20 degree chamfer around the edge on the underside. To make this easier to do on the breadboard ends, I cut the chamfer before gluing them in place. To attach the breadboards, I assembled them in place and applied pressure with a couple of ratchet straps. I then drilled three holes all the way through the breadboard and the tenon to insert some dowels. A common technique used to attach breadboards is called drawboarding. I won't go into that right here, but you can find plenty of videos about it. I chose not to use that method just because this old timber is so hard, I wasn't sure if I would actually break something. To allow for expansion of the top across its width, 
The two outside holes were elongated and the tenon on the tabletop has been cut slightly shorter than the length of the mortise in the breadboard. To lock the dowels in place in the breadboard end only, I applied a small amount of glue to the holes on the underside, making sure I didn't get any glue on the inside of the mortise. The ends only get glued in the middle to allow for that expansion I mentioned earlier. Then to finish off the installation of the dowels, a small amount of glue is applied to the top and the dowel is driven in just a small amount so that it gets glued to the breadboard only. Once the glue was dry, the dowels were cut off close to the surface, ready for final sanding. I'm just going to fast forward through this part while I talk about it because it was only a very simple build. The last thing left to do with the top was to cut the 20 degree chamfer on the long edges of the tabletop. I was originally going to attempt to do that on the table saw with the top balanced on its edge but the size and weight of it made it very precarious. When that little voice in your head tells you not to do something, you should listen to that voice. So instead of taking the tabletop to the saw, I chose to bring the saw to the top. And that's what this shelf slash support piece I'm making here was for. And here you can see how it worked and how well it worked out. It was definitely worth the effort to make it. A quick run over with the belt sander easily removed any saw marks. Well that's it for the top for now and probably a good spot to leave the video as part one and uh, we'll go into part two when we build the base. The only thing that's left to do on the top really is probably round over just the edges slightly, give it a final sand, but I'll do all that when the table is put together uh, onto the base. I have a couple of designs in mind for the base and I can't decide which one I'm going to go with so I'll have to decide that fairly quickly so I can get on to, the, uh, to finishing this build. If you want to see what I'm up to in between videos, just follow me on Instagram. I'm posting over there, not every day, but every few days. If it's your first time to the channel, then a huge welcome to you. And I invite you to subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss out on any future videos. And also, if you like, go back and have a look at some of my past videos as well. But until next time, when hopefully we've got a completed coffee table, you guys all have a great day.